Myth Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be discussing a very intense case that the Scientology Church, if I could call it that, has neglected a situation with a wonderful woman. And today I have Karen De La Carriere joining me. Welcome to Myth Vision, my friend. Hello, Derek. Hello. Hi, hey. everybody. I do want everyone to know, fair warning, uh, the content that we're going to get into and in the discussion is you know, very difficult. So if you have a weak stomach or you're concerned um, about some of the content that might be discussed when it comes to the death of somebody, you may not want to watch, just giving you a fair warning or be prepared. So Karen, please tell us about this wonderful girl named Lisa and what happened to her. This is probably the most tragic story in all of Scientology. A young girl in her early 30s migrated from Dallas, Fort Worth and took Scientology services. She, <laughs> she believed. She believed in Hubbard and she believed in everything. And one day she had a minor car accident, just like a fender bender. She stopped her car took off all her clothes and walked naked on Fort Harrison Avenue, which is like Hollywood Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard. It's a main artery. People walk on it morning, noon and night. And here she was walking stark naked. So it was called in. It's really not, it's not lewd conduct when you walk. Lewd means you're clothed and then you expose your <laughs> that's lewd. But obviously if you're walking naked, you've had a mental break mental breakdown or something, you're not so the police didn't look at this as some lewd conduct. They felt something mentally. So they rushed her to the prime hospital in Clearwater, Morton Plant, listed as one of the top ten hospitals in all of Florida. Morton Plant is state of the art. Now, remember what I'm saying about Morton Plant because it comes up in the story later. I do want to show everybody what she looks like here, just to give people an idea. Oh, of yeah. That's a nice. She was a beautiful, um, beautiful girl. And here's another one just to show people. Uh, gorgeous. I mean, really gorgeous girl. And so please continue. So the police come and check her into the psychiatric ward just for observation. And while she's there, certain Scientologists, including her boss, Vanetta Slaughter, <laughs> who was a David Miscavige little darling, arrive there. And they say it's against her religion, one thing your audience needs to know is Scientology is anti-psychiatry in an obsessive, lunatic fashion. Here we are today where I talk out against drugs and psychiatric abuses of electric shocking people, mm -hmm. okay, against their will, of drugging children with them not knowing the effects of these drugs. Do you know what Adderall is? Do you know Ritalin? Do you know now that Ritalin is a street drug? Do you understand that? The difference is no, this was no, not Matt, against Matt, her I'm will, asking, though. Matt, but this wasn't Matt, against your question. Will. Matt, I'm asking you a question. I understand Do, there's no. abuse of all of these things. No, you see, here's the problem. You don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. They want to destroy. They promise they will eradicate psychiatry from this planet. Now, psychiatry has MDs, medical doctor. If you're a psychiatrist, when you've done med school for seven years you don't know what even want to become a psychiatrist these are medical doctors and they're going to be eradicated off the place of, of planet earth that's scientology's battle cry and we've it's mentioned early. in a previous episode that that is clearly something from l ron hubbard's yes. uh, uh, uh his Perfect. pride yes. in how the scientific community saw him as a charlatan as a fraud as a hoaxer who did not have actual scientific data that he brought to the table that they were like, oh, wow, let's worship 
Hubbard, no. So he had this deep vendetta against the against the scientific community, the very people in which they're saying, no, only Scientologists can treat us. That's it. Excellent point, Derek. You see, the very first book started the, the fight. He called it Dianetics, the Modern Science of Mental Health. <gasps> and the mental health community, mental health? He, <laughs> from what school, from what PhD, he's writing a new book on mental health? That was the title of the book. So that started animosity right away. Book one, Dianetics, Modern Science of Mental Health. Okay, so they encouraged her to sign herself out, a group, a whole posse of And she wanted to be with her friends. She, you know, so she signed herself out. Now we're going to get into her story. She signed herself out and she was locked in a room at the Fort Harrison Hotel. She was locked in a cabana and a procedure was done on her called introspection rundown. Now, when in medicine, when in medicine, Clinical trials involve hundreds of people testing, hundreds of people over a period of time. Hubbard had one case history, one, no clinical trial, one. One case history of a madman called Bruce Welch, who grabbed a carving knife from the gallery and ran down the corridors of the Apollo ship saying he wanted to kill L. Ron Hubbard. So L. Ron Hubbard did some. Do you want me to sit, briefly tell you what he did? Yeah, sure. He was strapped down, locked in a cabin, and Hubbard became his pen friend. No one was allowed to speak to him. Food was put under a slot, and he was in isolation. And Hubbard and him corresponded. And three weeks later, he came right out of it. And he was well. So Hubbard took that procedure of locking someone in isolation, no talking, maybe a few notes back and forth, and a halogen lamp goes off, sanity occurs. Mm. That was what they did to Lisa. No speaking to her, no talking, lock her in the room, after this one procedure done on Bruce Welch, it's now exported to become a procedure done on everyone. Derek, what was done on Bruce Welch was when we were on the high seas. It's very dangerous when you have a killer with a machete on the high seas because you, you, you're on a ship. Lisa wasn't on the high seas. This didn't need, she didn't need to be locked in a room. There was no danger. She wasn't running up and down with a knife to kill. But she did go more and more crazy. She would say things like, I am God. I created time. Mm. You know, while she threw her own feces on the walls, she was in a complete, utter mental breakdown. That's sad. They belong in the Morton Plant psychiatric facility. But a doctor who never ever saw her was prescribing Valium, a diazepam, and chloral hydrate. Of course, she was refusing. They were shoving it down her throat with a turkey baster. Just and she wouldn't eat. And every day she was drugged as she got more and more crazy with chloral hydrate mixed from Dr. Minkoff of the Tampa Bay. He never even saw her, but he was a Scientologist, so he was prescribing. If you look up on Google, chloral hydrate mixed with 
a diazepam can give you long-term brain memory loss and totally affect the new neurological system you can these two are a cocktail you know mm. a drug can be effective but you mix it with another drug and whoa like, now, I, <laughs> I thought they didn't believe in these drugs from what i understood so this is already but like are those crazy they truly believe in the drugs in drugs and Scientology has had a huge amount of mental breakdowns while they, the people are getting their counsel. Huge amount. In fact, they had schedules called Baby Watch. Baby Watch meant you had to, for three, four hours a day, be on guard to guard the next mental breakdown. When I was there for some seven or eight years, there used to be two or three mental breakdowns with baby watches all going on at the same time. So Lisa's horror story is only one story we're sharing. We're not going to keep rolling on this so much. We don't have to keep talking about it. But this is only one right. of several that occur in science. It's not a, a unique only one. But Lisa's is tragic because she died at 32, forced to take these drugs while she got more and more crazy for 17 days after they kidnapped her out of Morton Blount, which because they are anti-psychiatry. So they get her Ooh. out. Let me let me show an image of her for a second here. She's got this plaque. Is there oh. something significant about this plaque yes. in particular? Yes. Please they inform. Have three very expensive procedures called the ELS. And I was an ELS case supervisor, so I know it inside out. L11. It costs a hundred thousand dollars to have these three procedures done. One hundred thousand dollars. And L11 is one of the three. So three weeks before she went crazy and took off her clothes and walked naked, she had this L11 procedure done on her. Mm. And David, this is not, the year is 1995. David Miscavige, who never had any case supervisor training ever, he didn't, <laughs> is barely a class four in training was supervising Lisa McPherson in the weeks before her death. He was supervising her, her psychiatric, psychological. The leader of the church was supervising Lisa. And mm -hmm. he, in Scientology, there are video cameras in every counseling session. You are on camera and it's recorded. And all these cameras of all these counseling rooms are in a, like a bank. You enter a room and there's 30, 30 screens and you right. can click in. So any executive can wander in and watch what you're saying. You think this is private. You're giving up a sexual masturbation and you think, well, you know, and I wasn't thinking of my wife and I was fantasizing this. And you think you just got priest penitent privilege, whereas 50 execs could wander in and just watch you giving up this secret of yours. So Miss Cavage was watching her on the screen, testimony of those around. And he said, she's clear. Clear is an elevated spiritual status where you no longer have a reactive mind. And do you know, shortly before she went crazy, she attested to Scientology clear. She was the, that's pretty much saying, if you're looking at it in um, Christian terms, you're perfect. Uh, you literally have achieved the supreme that you can possibly be as in pure or something like that. Um, it, that's, and the fact that he, if I can use the term, 
misdiagnoses her. Now, this is the the head honcho head of the whole spiritual uh, movement here that um, is telling everyone and her, you're you're clear. And next thing you know, she's not clear. I wonder what kind of excuse in his head he uh, rationalized for that one. Oh, how they tried to cover up that he had a declared clip just shortly before her mental breakdown. <sighs> Mm. She, she, when you attest a big state, you have to give a, a success story speech, go up on stage, and you tell all your wins. Is this, is that where this is happening? Yes. Okay. Yes. He's on stage right now giving the speech. That's why she's holding up the cert. And she's Got giving it. the speech. Now, this was the first inkling. Derek, I really love that you're giving a picture. This is this is very good. This is good. She knew she wasn't clear. She had all kinds of mental agitation going on. And this is the first time she started acting. Her voice was agitated. She was she didn't seem cool, calm, and collected giving a success story speech. Why? She knew she was lying in this attest. She hadn't attested some state of Bodhi or Nirvana. And another thing I got to throw at you, people go, well, I attested Claire, but I don't know if I, if that was true. I got mental image, pic nasty pictures in my head. I got voices and figure, 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 and I got distressed and they go, you haven't done your OT3 to OT8. It's the attached spirits that are bugging you. So Spend the some more half, money. The next half million dollars is, you're clear, but you're not really sane and you're not really everything we promise only because what about the body things? You're, you're infested. So you attained clear, but you've got 400 million pesky fleas all sitting around you, jabbering and talking. So that's the next half million dollars. Anyway, Lisa wasn't, Lisa gave this speech. It was very erratic, jagged, and it was almost like she was obliged to give a speech on something she knew was bogus. Wow. So she how long after she gave this speech did she Just three have weeks. this? Just two three weeks. weeks? Three weeks. Three, three weeks. weeks. Three weeks. So she rear in someone and then that's the spiral downhill for her. The re the little fender bumper was absolutely no reason at all to take off her clothes and do it. Maybe she was having a, um, what's it called, which caused the fender bender. You see what I mean? Like maybe she was already nuts in a way. And then that's why either she rear-ended someone or someone rear-ended her. And that's the, where she's in this episode. Not that that was the reaction to, but that she was already in, in an episode. And here they are trying to diagnose these statins I mean, how ridiculous, like these well, invisible, non-existent. You were very clever to say that because there's something in Scientology, a ritual called write up your crimes. It's your overts and withholds confession done in writing, which by golly, the church hang on to some of Mike Rinders for your good friend, Mike Rinders. They took what he, you have to confess, confess, you're criminal, you've done crime. Lisa, for, after she attested Claire, had to sit and write up her crimes, morning, noon, and night. I will show you, I will, I will put it in comments. Her last overt withhold write-up would make you cry. Mm. She is trying to get into the depths of her soul to find her evil. And she writes, you know, I thought she makes some thought of hers. 
a criminal act. It's, it, you just glance at the first page and you see how she's struggling to find out how wicked, wicked she is and needs to confess. It's, this, sorry, I was going to say this is a, it's a sad thing. And I guess it'd be we're at the point where we're going to go ahead and and let people know and see uh, a few images. I want to warn them because you're getting right to the point yeah. of her death. But before I show these images, maybe you can lead us up to here. You have her confessing. She's doing everything she can. She's now rejecting food. She's really in an episode. She's not in a mental health hospital where medical professionals can help her because of her religion. And they're trying to treat invisible thetans. How ridiculous. No, so they were, they were treating that she didn't hit those levels yet. They were just, she, nobody was allowed to, they put foreign language people who couldn't even speak any English. She couldn't talk to anyone. She was on baby watch with these guards and they wrote extensive notes. But on the last day, there was a red alert that she was really deteriorating. There were visible signs that she was getting worse and worse and worse, borderline yeah. from life. And instead of rushing her to Morton Plant, five blocks, literally a three minute, two minute ride. They took her to the Dr. Minkoff in Newport Ritchie or some suburb of Tampa, I don't know. He, he was 35 minutes away. And in the 35 minute drive in the car, she died. She was dead on arrival. So instead of saving her life, and taking her to a top 10 hospital, spitting distance from, the, from Scientology. They took her to Dr. Ritchie, who was put her on chloral hydrate and diazepam, Valium. And when she arrived, she was dead on arrival. That's crazy. What the state of Florida did Bernie McCabb, state prosecutor, he indicted the Church of Scientology criminally for abuse of an adult and practicing medicine without a license. This was the Church of Scientology being indicted for criminal conduct on the death of Lisa McPherson. I think the coroner was horrified I didn't send you more photos, but if you Google Lisa McPherson autopsy photos, her body was covered. Ooh. Anyway, yeah. uh, you get the picture. I definitely this get the picture. This was Scientology willfully, willfully implementing Hubbard's one shot win on the Apollo with the mad Bruce Welch and implementing that procedure of locking someone in isolation, not talk, not letting them talk, not communicating, not showing them affinity, nothing, just incarcerating them in solitary, which is the end. You know something, Derek, right now, this is unbelievable. Before you take any service in Scientology, there are four contracts where you sign away your life. You can never sue them. You can never yeah. take them to court. You can never do that, 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 that. You can never speak on the internet. You can never. One of the contracts say, if you go crazy, you have a mental breakdown. They can lock you up and do the int and do this procedure. Right now. You oh, have to that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have, I've you got the contract to show you. I have serious, serious problems with that kind of stuff. And that's one of the reasons I love doing what I do here at Myth Vision is to educate people to see through these superstitions and, and these ridiculous ideas. Uh, there's much better ways to deal with mental health. And we have science that can do that. 
So Karen, we saw one of the darker sides by just seeing her face and how that was at the end, that that was even allowed to get that far. I mean, you, you, there's much more going on than she's just visually looks like she's, uh, oh, she looks like she's just a little bit maybe close to something bad. That's really bad. That's that's like beyond uh, what you would expect someone to have. And so anyway, to, let's end on a high note because it's such a dark uh, yeah, thing so that happened to her. Yeah. What was, and I hate to use the term sacrifice, but the she speaks after her death in a way. And her way of speaking is is a powerful way of taking down such a ridiculous uh, complex like this. Can you tell us about it? Lisa changed the landscape of how Scientology was viewed. As the story leaked out more and more, by the way, they got the coroner to change. Scientology became an army. They just went off to the coroner. They just, so instead of putting the death the way she she put it, negligent homicide or whatever, she changed it to accident. And with all the heat put on her, she said it was a pulmonary embolism. She died of a, after being locked up for 17 days. <laughs> and she, she said it was a pulmonary embolism. Anyway, to end on a high note, Lisa opened the floodgates. Groups formed. People protested and marched on the Fort Harrison with candle every year on the date of her death. I think it's December 5th. Person, he, people just put up pictures of her and do vigils. And, but more, more importantly, people opened up blogs and forums and talked about Scientology's per cult procedures. She just made it explode. And what Scientology called the attacks, they call it the attack era, the attack started. Well, Lisa's death opened up. So even posthumously, she's gone. But she made even quiet people sitting on the fence or not talking. Everybody started exploding and talking to others and journalists and TV shows and YouTube. Mm. And people all started sharing their stories. That wow. was Lisa McPherson's legacy. Oh, man. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we learned about her story i hope people take this and realize stay away from scientology number one but also stay away from these types of cults anyways and i ask everybody who's watching tell us what you think about this in the comments section love to hear your thoughts in particular about lisa and rest in peace you know we we i wish this wasn't the way it ended for her but it's um it's one of those things where this church is it's really, really harmful. And sometimes it takes that for people to see it. Like you said, people sitting on the fence finally realized and had to speak out. And I just hope this helps someone out there who might be wrestling with these ideas. Thank you so much, Karen. Do you have something you'd like to say? Derek, what makes this so bad is if you join, let's say you join a gangster group, a mafia group, you know, the you know, the rules, they will mm -hmm. whack you if you, you expect to be <laughs> you in, in joining Scientology. You trust and believe. You don't expect to be taken down furiously and cruelly. It's different when you join one of these faiths because you're trusting. You don't expect betrayal as you would if you were joining a evil mm. group. <laughs> Anything goes, you know, you join a cartel, okay, one day you're alive, next day you and your family are slaughtered, but you joined a cartel. All the rules, you know what you were stepping into. In Scientology, there is so much deceit that people don't know what they're stepping into. And I'm glad you're exposing it in Myth Visions. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Karen. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Let us know what you think down in the description or in the comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that show. I have hundreds of other ones on the Patreon letting you guys know you can help us continue doing what we're doing at Myth Vision Podcast. Also, you can have questions asked to the academics that I research with and I interview. Your question can be asked in a 1080p high quality video that might end up on YouTube. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna expose the cults, show these superstitions for what they are, and the errors within these texts and all of these religions to help people realize they're all man-made and that we have what it takes. All we need to do is pull together. Let me tell you something. The religious world has the financial backing that those skeptics such as myself don't have. So if you want to help and be a participant, you can for a little little bit a month. It's not much. If you want to go more, you can. But like I said, this is how I can keep the lights on for Myth Vision. 